This meeting will be recorded um, per Governor Lamont's Executive Order 7B. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the December, <laughs> December, January 26, 2021 meeting of the Weathersfield Historic District Commission. For those of you who have not been here before, tonight's session will be composed of two parts, the public hearing and the public meeting. In the public hearing, we e ask each applicant in turn to come forward and explain their application in detail. This will give us the opportunity to clarify what it is you are proposing to do and for you to ask us any questions. Also, commissioners may voice an opinion or suggestion based on their own feelings. However, a vote is not taken until the public meeting following the public hearing. In the public meeting, which is not open to public comment, we will deliberate your application and decide how to act upon it. We may approve it, approve it with stipulations, table it for further consideration, or in rare cases, we may deny it. You are welcome to stay for the public meeting, but need not do so. The results of tonight's meeting will be available from the Weathersfield Building Office tomorrow at 860-721-2839, anytime after 9 a.m. Please be advised that the Historic District Commission approval does not preclude the need for any other required permits, such as zoning, inland wetlands, or building. Please contact the building department to review any other permits that may be required before you begin your construction. With this, I will ask our clerk, Commissioner Lyons, to read our legal notice. You're muted. Mute. Sorry about that. I was just saying I put my hat on to cut down on the glare, but uh, legal notice, Town of Weathersfield <laughs> Historic District Commission. The Weathersfield Historic District Commission will hold a virtual public hearing on Tuesday, January 26, 2021 at 7.30 p.m., and the following application seeking a certificate of appropriateness. Application 5099-21, Doug and Ashley Elliott, seeking to install a split rail fence around rear yard, install a 12 by 18 Clotter Farms garden cape shed in rear yard, construct a four by five chicken coop in rear yard at 30 Broad Street. If you wish to review the applications on file, you may request a copy by contacting HDC comments at weathersfieldct.gov or by calling 860 721-2836. Live participation is available by audio format. Any resident interested in speaking on an application or wishing to listen to the meeting should email HTC comments at weathersfieldct.gov or call 860-721-2836 by 6 p.m. on the night of the meeting to be sent a phone number for audio access. Please include your name, phone number, and address in the email. Town of Weathersfield Historic District Commission Kim Wolf, duly authorized, dated at Weathersfield, Connecticut, this 11th day of January, 2021. So this is gonna be a quick meeting tonight. We've got, thank you very much, Chris. We've got um, one application and then a couple of people to speak um, informally on pre-application material. So we'll start with application 5099, uh, Doug and Ashley Elliott. Hi everyone. Hello. Hey there. Evening. So Good evening. So um, thanks for your time. Can um, you name and phone, name and address for the record, please? Sure. Doug and Ashley Elliott, 30 Broad Street. And what do you have for us today? So we are looking to install a split rail fence um, with wire mesh to enclose our backyard, um, starting from the rear right corner of our house, wrapping around the property and connecting to the garage along with a small 27 to 30 foot section to connect the garage to our existing deck. Um, I don't know if you wanna go section by section, but I can kind of go over the full thing for now. Sure. So then um, after that, we're looking for a clover farm shed, 12 by 18. Um, currently we've got it you know, planned out for the rear center of our backyard. Um, I guess we would ask if we could do it in that spot or potentially to the right corner of the backyard. Um, we'll be taking down kind of an overgrown bush and kind of want to see the space. Um, so it'll be white, um, charcoal shutters, um, nothing special, no transom, no cupola or anything. Um, and there'll be a ramp on the right side where the double doors would be. So the, the shed that's in the picture is going to be the, pretty much the exact model, just different colors. And then the addition of a door on the right side. Great. And where's the chicken coop going? The chicken coop will be kind of parallel to our um, garage. So it has the required access from the 100 feet from the front line, 25 from the side and 50 from the 
rear line. Yeah, if you scroll down to the last page. That's really cute. A little bit more. So that actually, that'll give you kind of a look at what our shadow look like as well. So the white and the black, so we're kind of going to match them together. Mm -hmm. um, and if you scroll down just a little bit more, it's right there in the center of the property to meet all the requirements. Okay. All right. Um, thank you for all the, the plot plans and the cut sheets from your um, products. It makes it much easier for us. Does anyone have any questions for the applicant? You'll see that the fence line is also drawn in. Um, everyone should have their own packet in addition to what was provided. It's a little harder to see if you've printed it out. There it is on the blue line. Yeah, so the blue is the property line, the yellow will be the fence. The fence line, sorry, yeah. Yep. Looking at the reverse on my thing. Great. I must say the chicken is detail. absolutely adorable. Thank you. <laughs> it's really cute. I've been trying to convince my husband he won't go for it. <laughs> Any other questions for the applicants? Nope. I was, I, I, I'm sorry. I was wondering if there was a fence around the chicken coop. So there will be a, a run, which will be an enclosed area. So the chickens will not be free ranging. Mm -hmm. um, that'll be five by 10. And that will be just a chicken coop material fencing. Just wrap around that with wood. OK, thank you. If you peek close in the photo, you can kind of see it behind it. Yeah. Okay. Very cute. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. Any members of the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, we have no other applications, so I will entertain a motion to close the public hearing and open the public meeting. I'll make the motion to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, the public meeting on this application. I think it's a great application. Everything we needed was there, so we didn't really have much to ask. Um, I think it's going to be a really cute addition. The garage placement is fine. I mean, the uh, shed placement is fine either way. The yard is um, big, and it'll be set back pretty far. So I have no problem with either spot. Jen, I'll make a motion to approve as submitted based on your comments. May I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 I think we've got everybody here, so no alternates, correct? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. Who was the second? I'm sorry, I missed it. Uh, I was Kim. Thank was. You. Lions. Uh, we'll move on to the uh, approval oh. of... Before we go further, I just uh, should have added that uh, in addition to what you had to say, Jen, that uh, what Kath Kathleen's question uh, helped clarify any uh, remaining doubt. So thanks to you both. Definitely, thank you. We'll move on to the approval of minutes from January 12th. The usual uh, comment at this time, which is our thanks to Linda for her efforts uh, at recording our uh, meetings and reporting them to the public. And our uh, thanks to Kim, our historic district coordinator for interacting with all of us and communicating with the public uh, so diligently. Thank you. Thank you very much. All those in favor, say aye. 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 No opposed. Moving on to other business, the pre-application for 35 Oldham Road. I think you're muted. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Your um, name and name and addresses for the record, please. Yes, John and Patty Ferentino, 35 Oldham Road. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Tell us about your project. Okay, uh, we submitted a uh, preliminary uh, footprint plan that uh, we had dropped off and we had sent a copy of the PDF. Basically, um, what we're looking to do are, are a couple of things. We're looking to um, renovate uh, the home. Uh, off of the back of the home, there's currently um, an attached 16 by 12 uh, porch that we believe was added over the years above a, uh, a deck surface. And um, one of the issues with that portion of the house is the windows that's starting to sag and the uh, windows themselves can't latch 
So part of this proposal would be to remove that and mm -hmm. um, put a, thank you, put a, a foundation area. Unfortunately, um, you can't see this very well, but if you look towards the middle of the, um, the drawing going from left to right is the existing foundation. If you could just scroll up slightly. And we tried to highlight here where the existing footprint is, which basically goes off of the back of the house, comes back in. What we're proposing to do is, um, like I say, remove that and put in an addition that would cover that space moving from right to left and then off the back a bit. And what our, our, our plan is here is to put some space in there for um, two bedrooms, a, a second bathroom, and a um, small sunroom, as well as a, a kitchen area. And what we're trying to do is to design the layout of the house so that is, for lack of better words, we age in place. It'll be uh, uh, friendly for us to, in terms of accessibility, moving in and out of the rooms and, and, and things of that nature. In, in addition, what we're looking, what we're proposing to do is in, in the front, and um, we don't have the front views yet. We're working with our architect to come up with this, but currently the front door is to the left of those three windows to the right of that small closet area. And what we're looking to do is to relocate the front door to the, what we're calling an entry hallway. There's currently uh, a window there. We replace that. We put a entryway there that would give us better access in and out of the house and the ability to, to move a little more freely uh, around the house. As part of this, we're also looking to um, replace all the windows. We're going to move a couple of the windows and we'll show that in, in more detail on the, the submittal that, that we put in. Uh, what else is here? Oh, and one of the other things is in the backyard, there's an existing shed that um, is in pretty poor condition. And we're looking to uh, replace that with a, a shed from Clotter Farms. So we're going to include that as part of the application as, as well. And we'll provide more specifics on that once we, we finalize that. And we're also looking to um, replace um, the vinyl siding on the house. And like I say, all, all the windows is, as well. So it's a big project. We, it, uh, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it, um, looked like, it looked like from what we had that most of it would be pretty narrow sight lines for us down the sides and most of the addition was in the back. Um, yes. We're obviously going to need a lot more detail about the front, the facade changes, and then um, of course the window details. And Kim can give you a little checklist of all the things you should be considering before you actually file, file your application. But certainly, um, you know, all the materials for the doors and all of that as well. Um, we'll want to see, and, and right. most particularly the siding. Yeah, we met with Kim last week, and um, she was e extremely helpful right. in helping us navigate our, our way through this. And uh, like I say, our, what we're trying to target here is get everything put together and submitted with all the details. We've looked at some of the um, submittals that have been on some of the previous uh, agendas. So we understand what we need to file. The architect we're working with has also done um, work in Old Weathersfield in the past. So he's aware of the, the submittal packages, the photos, you know, where the windows are today, where they're moving to, things of that nature. So the view that we're looking at right now that you have up there, to the right of the front door are those three windows. What we'd be doing is when we move the doorway to where the window is, to the left of the door, we'd be centering those windows underneath that gable. So you wouldn't, it would look, you know, symmetrical underneath the gable area so that the house would, would look um, proper, I guess, for lack, for lack of a better word. So right. that we welcome any um, feedback or, or input as we go through this. Um,
Does anyone have any thoughts or any questions for them today? Um, it's, I'm looking both at the drawings that were submitted and also at the Google Maps view of the front of the house. And uh, how much of an overhang of the roof is there at the front there? I, from existing, I think it comes out yeah. about two and a half or three feet. I, I don't have the exact okay, measurement because the floor plan of the drawing that we submitted doesn't show that overhang. Yeah. But I, we can get that, that information. No, no, I, I'm not pushing you for the information. I'm just looking, getting a ballpark figure. So basically sure. it covers most of that front stoop. Um, pretty much it does. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, and what we'd be doing would be moving the, the stoop area also over to the left and the existing the stoop would be removed. Yeah. What we're looking to put in as a, the stoop, we're looking to put in like blue stone with a decorative stone on, on the surface, the vertical surfaces of the steps. And, and we'll have um, photographs of, of that as well as part of the submittal. Vatsik? Yeah. Uh, Vatsik, I think he's right when he says it's two and a half. I yeah. think three would be a stretch. Yeah, the, no, the, that's fine. I was just, I was just sure. trying to get in my mind roughly how much it overhangs and, mm -hmm. you know, by the time you get through moving the, the things around, the elements of the door and the windows around, I just wanted to sort of visualize in my own head whether or not that roof structure above is going to look awkward as in just hanging in free space. Yeah. We've had some discussions with the architect about that. Uh -huh. And he, he is going to address how that surface looks. We just haven't seen the, the final drawings yet, okay. but we will take that, that back as well. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I share uh, Vasek's curiosity about that, as do the homeowners. Uh, but um, it's an exciting um, prospect uh, because it sounds like it'll provide you with square footage with a relatively minimal impact on the street. I think we just want a, a front facade that you know might work updated, but not look too out of place with the uh, rest of the street. Um, okay. And I think that's everything that you seem to be after. So thank you. Oh, thank you for the feedback. Appreciate so, it. So where are you moving to for the few months? <laughs> we're, we're staying where we are um, in Rocky Hill until we get, you know, this whole process underway and sub substantially completed that we can move in there. The contractor says we won't be able to be in the house with all the work that they would uh, no. be doing. I ironically, when we got married almost 40 years ago, we lived right around the corner on Old Pepperidge Lane way in the back in those um, wooden ap apartments. Mm -hmm. And we always loved the area there. Uh, we know some of the neighbors from back in our days when we were on Old Pepperidge Lane. So it's exciting and we can't get, wait to get back. We love the area. We're full circle, which is great. Um, it is. So the house currently has vinyl siding and certainly you can do a like for like replacement. I would mm -hmm. just say we love to see uh, hardy board or some of the other materials rather than just go with vinyl. So keep that in mind as you work through um, your choices. There's some what, great- hard, uh, What was it called? Uh, hardy hardy board, Gossick, you wanna talk? Sure. Um, what Commissioner Mead mentioned is a, the technical term for it is gonna be a cementitious fiber board. Cement board, yeah. And it's basically cement with some binder usually cellulose put together. And because, yeah. the, the thing that appeals to this commission is it's applied in the same fashion as a wood clapboard would be. And it allows the placement of the clapboards to fall at the bottom and the tops of windows and doors, which is very hard to do with something like vinyl or aluminum where the sizes are absolutely fixed. Okay. With, with each one, you can sort of move things around by a 16th or an eighth of an inch where your eye never picks it up, but the lines on the house turn out much nicer and cleaner. 
is there a reference you can that I can look up or I will send some stuff to Kim tomorrow and she can send it on to you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Yep. And you know, cost wise, it may drive it up a little bit, but it shouldn't be all that horrible. Uh, it's a product that's painted or you can buy it pre-painted, but if you paint it, I know from personal experience, unless you choose the wrong color, like green, like I did, uh, which bleaches in the sun, the paint is good for 20 years easily. Okay. You know, the uh, siding we've been looking at right now is, I think it's Mestec. I'm just trying to see it. I have it over on the counter. I think it's called Carvewood. That was the, um, the type of siding that we were yeah. looking at the different colors. We're, we're zeroing in on, on white, which is the existing house, because we think that would look best. And we're also looking at um, windows that would be the, the black frame on the outside as well, so. I will send the stuff to Kim. Okay. I would suggest just throw it in the mix and see how it falls out. Okay. Will do. Thank you. I think, I think that with either product, sir, you um, would probably find that we would favor a smoother finish rather than one that uh, tries to replicate a look of what people think a uh, wood grain would. Uh, we don't uh, normally favor a visible wood grain because it catches dirt and dust and it's artificial compared to the effort that was typically made to make clapboards smooth um, on uh, buildings in the old days. And so whether you use a replicating material like uh, vinyl or uh, fiber cement, uh, or you use clapboards themselves, we typically uh, favor a smooth finish okay. when it comes to clapboard style siding. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, feel free, even if you don't have all of your material together with all of the details, if you have drawings of the front of the house, feel free to share those with Kim so she can pass them around because I think um, that change of the doorway with that overhang is probably going to be maybe the bumpiest part of your application and we'll want to see that early and, and consider that early. As soon as we have something, we'll um, get it to Kim. Great. That's not a problem. Good. Thank Can you. I just you ask, oh, I'm sorry, Jen. Jen. No, go right ahead. As you mentioned, uh, with the moving of the front door, is there any overhang planned uh, in your plan, yes. John, for... Can you talk a little bit about that maybe? Yeah, what um, he's planning would be an overhang that would come out over it. And it's on the drawings it, itself, you'll see two square like blocks. And that would be like a, two pillars that would go up to a, an overhang that would come across. And that right now he's looking at how does he bring that overhang out and tie it with the changes he's looking to make where those three windows are on, on the, the overhang that we're talking about. Now you're considering a box window to replace those three two similar it would be a extending from the, or would that be a flat? Uh, we're looking, I think at a flat window. Flat for that. If you pull up, uh, Kim, you know that house, you did the Google view, there was a house similar to the right of the, of the applicant that has almost that double peak coming out. Great, right, hold on one second. Oh, there it is. Because that's not a centered uh, entryway. Is that to the, the left? If you're you face the, the house, it would be to your right. Oh, to the right. Yeah, we, I can't, we could see the thing that was on the drawing. Kim somewhere. had it up earlier. Um, it was a Google Earth uh, map. I'm putting her under the gun here, sorry. But we'll see the prints, but um, I was just curious. Yeah, I think that that's the part that's going to be. Yeah, to mix that and blend yeah, that in. Yeah, a different, a little bit of a tough design, but um, so we'll, you know, seeing the pictures early will be good for that. There we go. Oh, there we go. And actually, that's not a door. Then I, I saw, but so they have the one. I thought that was an entryway. That's a window with the brick face. Sorry. Oh yeah, oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah, we want this thing to flow properly. That's why one of the reasons we want to slide the windows over and that overhang was something that we saw ourselves. <laughs> Not being architects, that's why we got one that's looking at this whole thing. So well, one of the way that they address it is they put these tiny little brackets in the corners. The previous owner or the builder. Yeah, there's like a, a they're they're yeah. undersized for what they should yeah. be. 
Yes, it, they, they do look that way. They, they do. Okay. The other thing we were thinking about, what, another reason for why we wanted to move it was because when you walk into the house, you walk right into the living room and we were concerned with cold air coming in. Um, so we, where we were going to put the front door, hopefully we've done a little foyer so it does break down so the cold air is not coming right into the house. I mean, it goes into the foyer, but not- Not living, into the living, living area, so to speak. Right, your architect, and, he could suggest the porch there where the original stoop is to run to the door. I mean, you can do a bunch of things. Mm -hmm. So great project, congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you, we're excited. We can't wait. <laughs> Welcome to the neighborhood. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, if nobody has anything further, thank you again very much for coming in. We really do appreciate the early look at what you're thinking. It's helpful to all of us um, and we appreciate your time. No problem, thank you. We also have today with us um, a pre-application for 161 Main Street. Yes, my name is Joe Urso. I'm uh, here representing the Charles Restaurant, Great. which is 161 Main Street. And uh, we also have Bryce on the line, too. Hello. Um, Hi, Bryce. Welcome. Welcome. We saw, Hello. I think everyone had a chance to look at your pre-application material, which is pretty thorough. Um, so we can start with you giving us a quick rundown, and I'm sure people have questions. Very good. Yeah. All right. So my name is Joe Urso. I'm a professional engineer with Mylone McBroom. I'm now part of SLR Corporation. Um, we did the uh, design of this proposed patio. And what we're trying to do here is um, maintain the pedestrian friendly area. Um, we want to continue to build on this old town Weathersfield uh, overall community character. Um, but we want to give uh, outdoor dining opportunity um, and also maintain this historical um, district. So the goal here is to uh, use materials that are selected based on the existing um, surrounding historical architecture um, while respecting the village business district. Um, so what I would like to do is, um, if we can, Jennifer, if you could you share the. Uh... Kim is in charge of all technical matters. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. She can bring it up for us. Okay. And I just wanted to uh, go through uh, a couple of the slides and talk about those materials since I think, you know, this view that we have gives a good idea, um, you know, of what. The goal is here. Can but you could you could see the the lawn area here, and I'm sure you guys have driven by. The, they do want to maintain um, some of the lawn and keep the uh, the lawn activities, if you will, going um, during the warmer months. And what page also, do you want me on here? Kim, are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you put the um, the PDF of the the um, you know the package there? Can you not see it? Yeah. No. no. We see we see the Google Maps thing. You're kidding. It says it's telling me that I'm screen sharing and I'm scrolling through the chart. Okay, hold you on. You are screen sharing, but <laughs> you are screen sharing the wrong screen. <laughs> That's why I'm texting you. Are you with us? <laughs> Can you not see this? Now we see everybody and no screen sharing. Oh my gosh, I, my I, screen. Okay, hold on. Let me get rid of this. Because I can see it, so I don't know what the rest of nice. <laughs> if it helps, I could screen share it. No, you can't actually. IT turned off that ability. Okay. Well, I'll. Um, hold I, on. I, Let me try again. Now, can you see it? Yes, there yeah, you go. Perfect. That's so funny. This is exactly what I was looking at before. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Um, so what you can see here is um, in white dashed line shaded areas where the proposed patio is number five. And the rest of the lawn number three, the L-shaped lawn 
the goal is to maintain that lawn. Um, we want to put a decorative historical fence around the area. Oh, Kim, if you could go to, let's see, I think it would be page. That's good. One of these is, yeah, and that's good right there. Perfect for now. Um, we've got the, the fence going around the lawn. Um, the goal is to have that be a uh, black wrought iron fence. Um, the openness gives a, a feel of, you know, being able to see the lawn while walking along the sidewalk um, instead of like a, um, you know, a wooden fence where you have the slats blocking the area. So what we want to go with is more of an open feel. Um, so you got the ornamental fence going around the property line. We also have to uh, relay the brick walkway that exists right now. It's over a hundred years old. They definitely want to keep those bricks in place. So we are going to relay them so that the grading works. Sorry. And Kim, you can go to slide the next slide. So maybe we can see that pad here a little better. How about eight? Next one. Perfect. All right, so you can see the, uh, the perimeter of the patio has a seat wall. That will be a decorative stone. Um, also, you'll have a wall along the, separating the parking lot and the patio. So that wall will be a four foot tall stone wall with a two foot fence topper. Um, the seat wall around the pat the main patio would be about 18 inches to uh, 24 inches tall. Um, and inside, just inside of that, you can see an L-shaped planter bed that will do some uh, slight screening of the patio area that will also house the uh, electrical and, and gas utilities that would be used for the lighting and um, potential hookups for um, gas heaters. And um, also you see the family style table over to the right, positioned away from the main patio. That will also have its own landscape screening. Um, these landscape beds um, were aiming to go with uh, traditional historic annuals and perennials. Um, also, you can see the stone piers along the fence line inside the patio area. Um, obviously, those that stone look would match the seat walls, um, as well as the, the separation wall towards the parking lot. Uh, also, you see the shading pergola that's set back away from Main Street toward the parking lot. Um, there's a potential for a retractable roof or a canvas cover um, for rain protection. You'll see in the back right corner, there is a server station slash bar. And on the left side of the pergola is a gravel portion of the lawn area that would have a gas uh, powered fire pit. And um, we also may have to put um, some landscaped area in this lawn for a rain garden um, for the drainage um, uh, to hold the rain back. So that basically is the plan. Um, th again, the goal is to use materials um, that would satisfy the commission um, next next month, I believe we plan on submitting an application alongside a full set of plans, basically a site plan of this and um, some detail sheets. Along with that, we plan to submit samples, um, either physical or, you know, we might have them in hand to show to the commission or pictures we could submit. Um, stone for the wall, brick pavers for the patio, the fence type, 
information about the pergola and the shade roof material. Um, those are what I have listed right now as far as samples to give you guys a just give you guys a physical feel of what we're proposing. Um, but all in all, we're just looking to enhance the outdoor dining experience. Um, what, and take it out of the parking lot? <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> I, I have to say, I think it's a fabulous idea. And I thought that when you all came in just in the beginning working that it should be dining because it's a great lawn and a great situation. I do have um, some questions and thoughts. Um, you, looks to me like you may have as many as six different fences. You've got one on the perimeter. You've got, uh, you've got a seat wall. You've got the sidewalk going in. Um, you said that it's all gonna match. The pictures right now don't match. So yes. that's a lot of different fencing material, wall materials. And I think they all need to come down to two different things, basically. Like all the stone needs to match, all the ironwork needs to match, um, or it's gonna look very hodgepodgey, which is my new favorite word. Um, I definitely think that for the stone and brick, we need to see physical samples and not pictures. We need to see, and if there's a great variation in the stone, then I, it's not man-made. If it's natural stone, I think we need to see those, please. Um, I also am curious, one more. Um, currently, there are lights. They're quite large. We approve them. Um, they're aligning that walkway going in. What's, gonna, what's the lighting other than the um, little fairy light strings that you show? What's the lighting going to be? So we intend to build in lights into the stairs going from the lawn to the patio. We'll have built in lights also along the wall on the right side of the patio along the walkway. We plan to have built in lights in the wall. So the walkways have to be lit up. We yeah, understand. I mean, yeah, the, the walkway coming down from the street the walkway from the patio to the existing main street sidewalk will be lit up. So we'll want to know what all those are. And I, I think it'd be really great um, to have the scale of those lights pretty clear. Um, we approve the ones that are there now. Um, they're really big, I think, uh, in retrospect. So um, it's great. I, I think it's a super, super space. Um, yeah, I just, I just I think you're going to want to make sure your materials are very simplistic so you're not pulling away from everything else that's going on. Very good. I, go, I agree with Commissioner Mead. I think the, the use of the space and the design, it's, it's, it's perfect. And uh, I think it fits in appropriately again, but it really comes down to, yeah, how are, how are the materials going to blend in? I, I would love to see natural stone um I, you know in, in one of the pictures it almost shows like a you know a, a artificial sure. block yeah which kind of confuses me because the pillars are look like they're made out of stone and then the the seat wall looks like it's made out of artificial block so yeah i'd love to have a uniform look there um but yeah the the pergola i, I love that idea of the pergola i think that that fits really well um, and then, you know, the detail on the wrought iron fencing, which is obviously going to be the first thing everybody sees to, as they walk in. So, yeah, I think the wrought iron fencing is a good idea um, because it, it will disappear to the eye more than another material might. So I would want to see it simple, I think. Um, I'm a little concerned about the back wall in between the parking lot with the fence topper on it. So we definitely, yeah, I'm, I'm not crazy about it. I understand, you know, you need something su substantial there because you don't want people driving into your diners by accident. Um, but maybe we can soften it with some plantings or something, leaving enough space. You know, I, I'm pleased with the scale of the project that it doesn't stand forward. You're not building forward of the house's front line and that you're not overly ambitious with the amount of pergola coverage that you have. Um, because I know obviously the 
desire to have as much usable space as often as possible. I think that it's a really thoughtful plan that it doesn't try to cover the whole thing. Um, just some considerations. The pergola, the um, retractable awning, is that something that goes underneath the bar so it's not really seen either way? Yes, okay. it's underneath the pergola. Okay, I just haven't seen it used um, in a big one like that. So I'd be you know, interested to see how that works. We're gonna do think... some research into different options for that roof slash shade, uh, you know, material. Yeah, I think the pergola is great because it really reads as something that's appropriate for the house and the yard without making it look too industrial or too modern or too businessy. You know, it looks like you're inviting people over to your backyard for a garden party, which is great. But, um, you know, so I'll be curious to see how that works out. Um, in the I, I do think we're gonna wanna see, sorry, Jen, but um, it, I thought you were done. At least one drawing that shows the pergola scaled to the house. And we don't see that here, but we will we'll need to make sure that that, um, footprint and the, the height massing works with the house. We can't really tell that from this. I just have a couple quick, uh, yeah, as, on, in, as Jen had mentioned, you initially said a four foot high, is that the stone wall, the parking lot, and then a topping fence or is that this is? Uh... Yeah, so the solid uh, stone wall would be four foot high for a safety barrier between the parking lot and the patio. And then the matching um, iron fence would would go beyond that. Um, you know, we don't not that people would be jumping over the parking lot to get into the no, patio. But it's more sure. of a separation and, and safety also. And then you mentioned too now the concrete walk on center, that sidewalk that you mentioned that's gonna be replaced, matching in the main street uh, brick or what's going there? Did you no, the what I was saying there was the there's a main street um i believe that's a concrete sidewalk along main street and no that's street. brick that's brick pavers okay so whatever's there now um from the existing uh town sidewalk the one that goes up towards uh the charles proposed patio area but up towards the side entrance um that may be relayed to widen it, but so I'm specifically talking, uh, Joe, on you know, on the center street side that's a concrete slabs now. Was there oh, on the print? Okay, it no, looks sorry. like you were rebricking no, that. Not, we're not doing anything to Nothing the center there. street okay. side, just simply um, starting work on the the uh, your property, yeah, that the property side of the sidewalk. And then one last quick question sorry, uh, what, what was the feeling? Obviously, the fence for the patio liquor laws, what have you, but. What was the failing on to maintain a nice grass area, the, the perimeter fencing? What liquor laws? Yeah, the, the perimeter liquor fencing, laws for the patio, but how about the main uh, area? The perimeter fencing is to so that we can still use that grass area um, to serve. Okay. To serve. Gotcha. Uh, okay. So people can enjoy, you know, we can put those uh, maybe an Adirondack chair and, and that type of environment that we had to, over the summer and be able to use that lawn still. So. Gotcha. And then this just the last drawing you have up now too. I'm sorry, that stone wall looks like it goes from the perimeter and not and then past the pergola to to your walkway. So that's going to extend the full length of the frontage of the parking lot. Looks like okay, yeah, good. Yeah, the the main goal here is to protect. Yeah, the um, whole run. Yep. Protect everybody sitting in the patio, sitting on the gravel uh, yep. lower area from trap uh, cars. Sure. And the entire perimeter of the black fence doesn't have any pillars in it. It's just the wrought iron perimeter fence. Is that correct? Yeah, I've, we were we were thinking that if you had pillars or piers along that edge, it might take something away from what's really happening on the inside of the property. Yeah, I'm actually worried about how many pillars there are on the inside of the property, but we can take a look at that afterwards. And what is your plan for the bike rack that, you know, was so hard fought for your sure. <laughs> We're gonna painted. <laughs> You're gonna put it in the parking lot maybe? 
Well, we idea. talked about this last week and, and <laughs> being we talked about putting it uh to the right of the to the left of the main entrance or or there. I mean it's I'm really I'm honestly kidding. Um <laughs> but it does have to be moved, so we'll have to figure out where it should go. This original plan actually is accounting for that, but um we were told that it wouldn't be a problem to move if we had to. No, I don't think it is at all. Um, quick, now we're saying wrought iron as well too. It was your plan. I mean, that's not aluminum, inexpensive. Right? You're talking about aluminum or, or what are you? I think we were talking more of a, 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 a black, yes, probably, a probably foam, more of an aluminum yeah. type of, of uh, material. Yeah. I, I just wanted to say something about that part because Jen mentioned earlier that she liked something simple. Uh, I agree with her. I just don't think I would want simple contemporary. I'd like simple uh, appropriate for that uh, era home. So I realize that is a very, maybe a distinction without a difference because maybe something relatively contemporary would work in either setting, but I just, uh, didn't want it to look too uh, modern. Uh, but beyond that, I think I agree with everything I've heard thus far and wish you really well with this project. As always, um, as was said before, samples are gonna be important. Um, what we've been doing is Kim leaves the samples at one of the commissioner's houses and then we all stop by and say okay. hi. Okay, I was gonna so, ask that. Yeah, that's how we've been doing it. Normally we would plant them at town hall um, but because of the limitations on people coming in without appointments, it's just easier for us to do this, uh, do it that way. And somebody has a very nice patio that they allow us to use for drop offs and viewing. So that's how we'll handle that. Um, I, can if, make, I can make drive bys too. Yeah. And if you're adding to it, you know, as it comes closer, um, that's fine too. We'll just give you the address for where they need to go to save Kim a trip. And that'll be easy. Are there but, any um, we're really. Are there any areas throughout town that have um, black metal uh, fencing that we can take a look at that pops to your mind? Well, look Solace at the, Robbins yeah, look at the Silas Robbins house. They have a fence. I actually personally think that very simple and modern would just blend beautifully. That's my personal aesthetic. Um, you won't notice it because it'll be just very simple. Um, I, I actually want to get back to something with the fence that Janet said. You know, you've got the masonry piers and fence that's going from the sidewalk into the patio. You may want to think about just having that be a continuation of that aluminum wrought iron. Just really simple. You've got a perimeter fence that surrounds it. And then your eye comes in and sees all the beautiful pergola and light and people. So um, just maybe just really think about simplifying that down as much as you can. Um, it's less money. Hey, <laughs> that never happens. But um, that might be a, a, yeah. a good a way to think about some of all of the stuff that's going on. What height are you considering? I, I don't know if that was discussed. Uh, Is it code? 42, I believe. Or liquor commission, I think that's 48 inches. I think. Uh... Yeah. Is it 48 or 42? Uh, we'll, we uh, we'll have to look into it. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be what it's going to be. The only other thing I was thinking, and this is just a personal aesthetic, um, I love the having the lawn still and you know I loved seeing all the little kids run around on it while they were waiting to sit down during the summer um, was maybe a tree in that front corner to mm -hmm. kind of it would be twofold because it would provide the neighbors maybe with some barrier so they're not always looking at it they have a tree in that corner and um, you know as a sound barrier too maybe for the neighbors it's getting very busy in that corner which is good you know, um, we're excited and excited at the success of the business, despite the COVID this season. What um, are you know, speaking of? Sure. What corner? On the on the corner, uh, the front corner of the property to the left that it's open there. But that's just a thought. It's not a requirement for sure. I think maybe make sure that there's still a sight line too for people driving out of Center Street, just sure. pedestrians. Yeah. Doug, you're muted again. Yeah. Sorry. I thought that maybe, Jen, are you talking uh, about having the uh, planting on the inside of the fence? Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, if it is, then I'm assuming that the sightline issue for traffic will uh, not be there, Kim. At least I'm hoping that the, there wouldn't be a, f a fence that causes a problem traffic-wise. So if, there, if the uh, planting were behind it, it would hopefully not present a problem. I think ornamentally, especially because there's a pergola there, I think the idea of maybe even uh, an ornamental tree at each corner is not a bad idea. On the other hand, uh, it may not work for you uh, seating wise uh, until it gets tall enough uh, to just be a trunk there. But uh, the that's lake. a thought. Or a big giant pine tree maybe? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming in again. We really appreciate it. And the yeah, it's super helpful to see it in advance. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, it looks like a great project. I think the big giant pine tree would have been too much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the location. Thanks so much, you guys. Thank I'm you. looking forward to seeing it. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. All right, I'm moving on to the report of the historic district commissioner, coordinator, I mean. I would like to report one unofficial, undocumented. Um, conversation for tonight for 400 Hereford F. Maggie is here. Oh, great. Okay. I think uh, she's, oh, she's not muted. Okay. Hi there. Uh, also, Matt is with me. So Matt and Cheers, I, I uh, own Har 400 Hereford F. We appreciate you guys talking to us last minute. We didn't get on the agenda or get any materials in, um, but we did want to uh, talk to you and kind of go over some uh, plans we're going to be submitting hopefully next month, uh, in part because I think everybody knows that 400 Hartford Ave, which is, as many of you might refer to it as the Eleanor Buck Wolf House, is a particularly special property in town, and I know there's sometimes nerves when anything's going to change with that property. Uh, so, um, we're, our goal is to submit two projects. One is replacing the garage with a barn. Uh, and there are two additions off the back um, that Matt's gonna touch on a bit, but that have been causing us some problems since we purchased the house. And we're trying, we've, for years we've talked about how to fix those issues and we've been trying to. And so we're gonna submit a plan for that. But one, we wanted to give everybody a heads up um, and kind of make sure we have any, that we're prepared with any concerns you guys might have or what exactly we would need to make sure you need in these plans. But I think Matt's gonna touch yes. on all of it a little bit So more. we're still, so yeah, says Maggie, we've got uh, two submissions we're planning on putting in. We'd like to work them together. Um, one, because access to the rear of the house is required and that'll be much easier once we demolish the existing garage. Um, so we also think that doing them together has some efficiency. It's probably gonna be a lot easier on the neighborhood from a disruption standpoint. Um, a little bit easier on disruption to us since we'll be sort of living with a portion of the house uh, open for a while. So, um, so our real goal, I think tonight is really just to kind of give you guys the elements of what we're trying to do and see if there's areas where you think we should be focused or areas you'd like to see uh, maybe detail uh, above and beyond the standard submission, uh, just given the property, the nature of the property. Um, so, so that's kind of the goal. So for starters, as you know, there's a pretty rigorous conservation easement on your property. And so you should secure that document and circulate it, give it to Kim so that it can be circulated. Um, yeah, it has a carve out specific to the barn. So there is actually a carve out in that easement for barns. There um, is, you're correct. Um, I think if I recall correctly, though, it required it to be an outbuilding type placement. Um, it was really it meant to be, and I, I'll have to look at the original document myself as well. Um, but that should be the first thing that's provided to everybody because yeah. it's the most restrictive of all the people in town who granted these easements to the preservation trust. That is the most restrictive one on any of the properties and in fact applies to the interior of the house as well. Yeah, we will definitely provide that so that everybody can be on the same page because when we submitted the barn a few years ago, that was one of the concerns is nobody had that document, uh, but we have it now and we've read it. And I do think um, 
we are doing our best to work within the confinements of that, given the reality of the fact that, um, well, again, I, I don't, I'll, I'll double check, but I don't think there are restri any restrictions as to the barn. I think it specifically says like everything in this, excluding a barn, which you could put anywhere basically, but. Yeah, the language, the language was maybe not precise, so it may be interpretable. Sure. Um, our goal is to, to do something that everybody feels like keeps with the intent of the document. Um, and also meets, I think, the aesthetic requirements, the neighborhood requirements, and hopefully solve some of the, resolve some of the issues I have. What I don't want to do is come back and present to you a garage, right? Um, you know, because I don't think that that would be well fitted on the property, and that's sort of what we have now. Um, and the existing structure is, is not, you know, a natural fit, I don't think, for the property. Um, and we're trying to find something that is. Um, the, the probably more substantive area actually is the current additions to the house, which have, as Maggie pointed out, various issues uh, in design, which we haven't been able to mediate over 10 years. So uh, specifically, they leak badly um, because the roof design wasn't well thought out when the new addition was put on. And that's actually disrupted the prior addition as well. So both the additions on the, the structure leak, um, they ice dam. Uh, and because the new structure, the most recent addition, was built uh, without foundation on a significant portion of it, there's essentially exposed piping underneath it, which freezes uh, chronically during the winter. Um, well, I should say it's exposed, but there's no access. To right, it. there is no access to underneath it, although we've undermined the house to some degree, uh, literally dug underneath it be able to get to them and put insulation on them, they still they still present a pretty significant problem. So we need we need to resolve that um, or it, it's effectively unusable space in many ways. Um, it's also, I think, you know, the way it was designed on pillars, um, not pretty, and it's, and it's a kind of a modern design. It really does kind of look like maybe more of an 80s contemporary design addition, um, which we didn't necessarily feel was a, a great fit for the property. Um, and the, uh, the att attachment point for that really is the, uh, is the earlier addition, um, which then attaches to the ancient structure. And that addition uh, has, has significant issues relating to its age um, and has had damage done to it uh, from the design of the other addition, uh, as well as it has recent storm damage where uh, some objects were thrown into it and uh, so it has the uh, aging barn board was, uh, some of it was destroyed and some of it is just rotted. Um, but the, uh, the windows now, the custom windows have uh, several of them have been broken and need replacement. So we have a scenario where we're gonna have to make a significant amount of investment in that. And our hope is to do a single structure that's designed together to essentially fit in the footprint of the existing, uh, you know, with some caveats, I think a, a little bit It'll be a little bit longer, um, but that solves the problems of the roof line, the ice damming. Um, so that that's the probably the hairier part of our submission. Matt, are you working with an architect on the addition, uh, separate from the barn, or is the same person helping have, with both, or is this self-design? No, we have two. We have two different architects. So we, we have a one architect who uh, works with a, a hybrid. Uh, timber frame company that's going to help us with the barn and then we have another one who's working the design on the additions who's worked in the historic district before we're working with mike mcdonald for um the addition he's doing this he's doing the visitor center for the silas um the not the silas, stevens, yeah the uh, web dean stevens house yeah. currently thank you yeah well then um, certainly you have um you know I guess part of the reason I'm asking is because you have these uh, technical issues with the previous construction. I'm sure that's the first place you want to avoid a problem uh, going forward. So you're looking to both have an aesthetic success and a technical one. Yes, it's really important that we don't build anything that creates the same problems we have. Yeah, really, really do. <laughs> but of course, if this winter and last winter is any indictment, indicator you're not going to have any problems with frozen pipes in, for the future. 
<laughs> yeah, forget it. It's global warming is going to solve the problem for us. Yeah. We'll try to be okay. Well, uh, one of the more annoying problems is because there's no foundation, um, animals like to crawl underneath the space and occasionally die there, um, which is lovely in the summertime. Also, sometimes them dying is preferred because a, a raccoon <laughs> family usually moves in in the spring. Oh, and yeah. when baby raccoons are born, they are active all night. <laughs> Well, I, I certainly, um, as many of us have older homes um, of various ages and um, repair, uh, certainly older homes are a love-hate relationship. I think, um, as was said earlier, what's going to be most important is that, that covenant piece, which we have nothing to do with, um, which is very legal um, and very binding, that that be um, figured out first. Uh, before you come in. And then I think you have likely heard enough um, of what these conversations are like to have a sense of um, what kinds of things we're looking for, what kinds of drawings we're looking for. This may be, uh, um, this may be a project where an actual scale model is very helpful since you've got several additions and barns and existing and how they connect. That was super helpful on the house on Hartford Avenue across from um, um, Handler School. Uh, so yeah, I think I think once you get to that point, we'd love to see where your drawings are. But I I do think that that legal piece is something that needs to be taken care of first. Yeah, and that's uh, obviously you know all the wickets have to be gone through. I think our, our scale model is actually a pretty good idea, and if that's something that you guys would find helpful, then I think we can make that happen. Um, well, I think, I think Matt, that's especially important and because this is an unusual application in a number of ways, because a lot of times we don't have um, a view of the back. Uh, and in this case, because there's a public way from behind that is hard for us to access the, um, the modeling will really be of help uh, for the uh, view from the back. And then the modeling will be really helpful because as Maggie mentioned, um, or, and as you have said as well, uh, you're trying to do something more than a garage, which appears to be allowed. And a barn is usually more than a garage. But one of the nice things about the garage that's there now is that it evokes more of a kind of a shed or a lean-to of an earlier time, and it's subservient to the house. And I'm not saying that every barn would have to be subservient to the house, but it would be hard to imagine one that we would not, that we would want not to be. So uh, thinking about all those things does seem to lend itself towards some kind of modeling, whether live or um, computer generated. And uh, I agree with Claire that if the most restrictive view of the uh, documents uh, are kind of in, uh, um, inculcated by the um, two architects in their work, they may end up being able to come up with something that is uh, very agreeable for everyone uh, just because they kind of had that in mind to begin with. If they end up running up against barriers because the, they feel that there are restrictions there, at least they started from, they can say that they started from the point of uh, greatest respect to all of those things uh, before they uh, travel down another road. And I think that's something that's really important is that we would want to see every opportunity exhausted for the most sympathetic uh, uh, interpretation of these documents to the, uh, from a preservation point of view. Uh, and, and then hope that what they bring uh, is something that uh, is really uh, something that we all can agree on. That would be wonderful. Yeah, that would be the, uh, that would be the ideal scenario, obviously. Um, you know, when you talk about subservience to the house, um, you know, scale, I think is kind of what you're primarily referring to. So one of the one of the concerns I think that might have been brought up last time we we talked was, you know, the overall scale of the barn. You know, but barns are generally from a scale size, they're not sheds, right? So 
I guess my my question kind of in that is what is a scale that you guys would feel is not subs that you know maintains subservience? Well, Matt, if I could ask you then, where would where on the property would you put it? Where because a lot of that was elevation, you know that what's currently there is kind of a little bit in front of the home, and I think your last go around it was going to be really overshadow the home just because of the grade. Can you give us a quick idea where you think you might put it? The barn. Yeah. Things. You know, our goal, our goal was to utilize the footprint of the current, uh, the current. Let's put it where it was. Okay. But I don't have, I don't think we have too much concern if we, we have room, I think, before we bump into, into like wetland issues um, to push it back. And I think that would be possible. We might have to do some fill or, or whatever to make that work. Um, but I think it would still be in that general vicinity. Um, no, that's why I was saying you really need to check the document carefully because I really think that the easement was designed to allow for an outbuilding in keeping with the kind of outbuilding that the property would have had originally, which um, there was in fact a, a barn and a structure on the lower portion of the property that was a sheep washing unit. And so I think you really have to look very carefully at that document because um, when it when it spoke to a barn, that's the kind of thing it was looking at. Um, something I know for a fact what Eleanor was envisioning at the time was something on the lower to the right side of the house. There's a, a vast amount of property available there. And that's what the, the vision was that you could build another outbuilding in keeping with what had previously existed. So I think you need to look at the document carefully and see if what you think you would like there is consistent with the document, what was actually put on paper. Yeah, so obviously the covenant, the covenant's its own deal, which the HDC really, I don't think plays a role in. So I think what I'm sort of asking is from the HDC's perspective, right? Um, in looking at putting a building uh, in the space where we're talking about placing a building, which can functionally be a garage, but would also aesthetically um, look more of a barn rather than the shed that sort of exists. You know, do you feel, do you, what do you feel dimensionally would be significant? Can I weigh in here? Sure. Uh, my take on it is dimensionally, I don't think it will make a hell of a lot of difference. Uh, I think more of the, along the lines of if you're building a, let's say you decided you wanted to build a two-story Victorian barn. I think the architectural detail involved with be, building a Victorian style barn with dormers and overhangs and this and that would make that building much more prominent than the existing house. And I think certainly that would overshadow it. However, if you built, this is just for the sake of argument, a small version of a Connecticut tobacco shed with the vertical siding, with a very simple roof line, uh, architecturally, I think that would be subservient to the house even if it was of the same size as far I, as cubic, cubic foot, cubic feet are involved. I think Vasek has a, a good point because, and I don't want my term subservience, he defined it uh, better uh, because uh, it isn't necessarily dimensional, but uh, what he's mentioning there's a barn on uh, Broad Street that is uh, next to 65. And it's, uh, I think, somewhat like what Vatsik is mentioning. It is basically dark wood, vertical. Um, the garage doors are dark. Uh, in this case, the barn is set back uh, far, but it has a front facing gable. Um, you know, it's a relatively sizable building. I don't know if the commission would uh, feel comfortable having something that tall there, but the plainness of it would certainly be an attraction. Um, and I don't know that 
that particular barn would qualify as a, a tobacco barn, but it was restored by uh, the uh, builder on Hartford Avenue um, um, in the past five years. And it came out really nice. And uh, I would suggest that maybe Vatsa take a look at that uh, barn to see if that's at all what he's referring to. And then uh, that can always be communicated back to the folks uh, through the coordinator. And was that 65 Broad Street, did you say, Doug? Yes. Okay. I, I think it also though has to do with the lot size um, and the placement on the lot. Um, obviously there's a great deal of property there, but it drops off sharp and it's all in the back. Um, so the massing, if you will, of how that all fits together is gonna to be pretty important. You could build a much, obviously a much bigger garage barn if you put it, if you had the room to, to set it very far back so that you've, you've got a clear division and a lot of space off the house. So that's, we can't really answer that question for you, but I think with your specific property, but I think that's gonna be part of the equation. Well, and I agree with what Claire is maybe getting at there. Um, I'm trying, uh, dog, sorry. Well, no, <laughs> I mean, I, I don't wanna uh, assume is what I'm saying that, that uh, you're getting at what I'm about to say, which is that, you know, to a certain extent, if you're just talking about parking your cars, keeping the current garage in some form for your comings and goings of the, of the two most used vehicles and building another structure for the other functions, if it can be, if it can manage to be approved. I mean, if you put a barn the size of the one at 65 Broad Street on the slope I mean, and, and build it down below so that it doesn't have to have an, uh, a first floor entrance, main floor entrance of Hartford Avenue, uh, I think that there would be, uh, at least for me, uh, at least an open mind to what, uh, if a building is allowed down there, what that building might look like. And I know that uh, what Jen seems to be talking about is that that barn might have to favor the other side, but if there's a way to get a driveway um, either over there or to, the, to behind the existing garage, you might have the benefit of both buildings if that's allowable without well, noticeably uh, impacting on the streetscape or the view from the cove in a way that couldn't be accommodated. Thanks well, for the okay. Where our hands are tied a little bit there is about halfway down our sloping hill. It becomes um, the property instead of is dealt with the Army Corps of Engineers and there is no building. It's basically open for farmland only. So we can only go so far back. Um, and I do think uh, in part, I, I my concern is putting too many, even though it is a big lot, putting too many buildings on it and, and the garage that stands there would need a lot of work. There's a, a very large crack in the foundation. Um, the roof needs replacing, um, but mostly it's the crack in the foundation that concerns me anyway. Um, I mean, definitely- what, what, I, I respect that, Maggie, then. What about the idea of driving the second floor of the barn? And so that the second, instead of we're losing you, Doug. Being a two story size. Uh, I can stop, maybe that'll help. Um, instead of having a second floor, uh, a first floor that's uh, entry off of Hartford Avenue, that that's actually driving into the second floor of the barn and you have a, a full floor under it. And then you uh, build into the side of the hill and don't end up wasting lots of money on um, fill uh, and uh, for the building. And instead you have access to it uh, from down below. So I, that's another thought if others um, know what I'm talking about or you have already considered it. Yeah, in fact, we've considered, we've considered that as well. Um, uh, so it's, it's possible. Um, again, if it comes down to uh, scale to the house, right, then 
that's certainly an option that we'd consider. It's something that we talked over with the uh, with the architect currently. So, um, you know, and structurally it's doable. Um, you know, so it's it's possible to do that. Um, I wonder what that would look like from the front, though. Because uh, you mean from the water or from from the street? No, I think I think we could make it very attractive from the water side. I wonder what that would look like from the street side. Okay. So, Doug, what you're um, to is sorry. technical name for it is a is a bank barn. A bank barn, right? Okay. Um. We yeah. Can, and I, it, we. I, I mean, just thought of what I was going to say is I I just remember last time, it seemed like you were looking for a footprint that was relatively sizable, and I guess that's what I'm thinking when I'm thinking if you could have that. Uh, what would be the first floor of a sizable building be the second floor, then you could have a more sizable building than you would otherwise have without it being so imposing. So thank you. No, it's certainly an idea to think about. I think um, part of our inspiration was, at least originally was building like something inspired by the Cove warehouse that looked like an old barn and seems to fit in the style of buildings that are already there. And that's never really gotten out of our head. Uh, um, but it doesn't mean that that is the answer. Understand. I mean, that I, I, it's good that you're refreshing our recollection of that and where that came from. And, and I may be overestimating how big the slope is there, but the bigger the slope that you're dealing with, the more it just seems to make sense to have structure instead of fill. Um, if, if you, um, if it's well suited to that. So again, um, I'm, it may be that the footprint of the existing garage is as big as you really need to go without doing a lot of other more, uh, a lot of other fill. Um, so maybe um, I'm taking, uh, I'm thinking off base here, but on the other hand, uh, I'm thinking of uh, uh, some of the other properties on that side of the street and the slope and, and thinking it mm -hmm. maybe could work. Yeah, sorry, my, my comment on Phil wasn't to fill, to backfill the barn. I think we would do exactly what you're saying, which is you know use the structure to do that. I think we would have to fill to support a longer driveway um, because it does slope off towards the house there. Um, I, I think it's very doable though to set the building back. Um, I don't think it would be a, a tremendous impact. We wouldn't be bringing in truckloads of fill to do that. I think we would just need to build up or maybe even retain a wall. Uh, would suffice um, but we could probably extend the driveway to push the barn structure back because um, it is in front of the house i think now thank you very much again uh th this is kind of hard to do but it's good that uh it's happening early enough so that it can influence the drawings so thanks to the commissioners and to the homeowners for engaging in it yeah, I appreciate you guys taking us on last minute. And I do have to say, I think, uh, Claire, to your comment of the love-hate relationship, I've got to say, uh, I've worked in historic houses. So when we bought this house, I was petrified it would be like a money pit. I don't have a love-hate relationship with the 1666 house. I love it. And knock on wood, it has just, it has no issues. They built it perfectly. Are two additions I have the love-hate relationship with. There's things I love about them, but it's just those are an endless money pit and a problem. Uh, and now there's enough problems that we need a resolution. Yeah, they really weren't well integrated, I, I think is one of the problems too. So the systems of the house, so your furnace and water systems and things like that just never integrated well. And so you have endless piping problems, you have the, the inability to heat them, uh, maintain them, uh, it becomes very complicated. Uh, so I, and I also think, you know, maybe I'm running forward 30 years in the future or something like that, but, uh, I think that the couple that was on talking about growing and growing old in, in place a little bit, and I look at this house and say, well, we would like to do that. I would like to get a, uh, a more uniform floor, um, in terms of having a single floor rather than the sort of up and down that those, uh, those additions sort of present. Um, so I would like to see, I'd like to see something that solves that problem for us. So that we're not faced with having to do that 30 years from now. Okay, thank you very much for coming in. Please get us that document um, as soon as you can so everybody's got a chance to review it. And we look forward to seeing you back in the future. Yeah. Sounds good.
Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks to you both. Thanks to everyone. Our next item on the agenda is correspondence. Kim, do we have anything else? We do not. And I will then entertain motion to adjourn. Motion to Still adjourn. Moved. Yeah, moved. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Good night, y'all. Good night. Take care.